She runs. Oh boy. <laughs> well, here you go. Welcome to another quick edition of My Junk is Stuff Garage. I get a lot of junk. Anyway, recently I got a mini scale, mini scale, uh, Hudson from about 1938. So, and I think in that video I mentioned that the company that that sprung from was called My Loco. Well, one of the things I needed for my Hudson was this new pilot. Well, new 80 plus year old pilot, but a new pilot nonetheless. And a good friend of mine, uh, Carrie, was generous enough to say, hey, I got one of those. And we started talking and <laughs> you know what happens when you talk. And well, in addition to the pilot, I might have just ended up with something else related related to that mini scale Hudson, but not another Hudson and not mini scale or mini scale. So what could that be? I don't know. If you're curious, hang out and take a look. Might be fun. <laughs> Atta boy. Texas tornado right there. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know what this could be from. It's coming from, uh, oh, it's coming from Chicago. This is what happens when you know a guy. If I can get this open with one hand. I think I'm destroying some stuff. There we go. We get that opened up. Well, I'm gonna have to stop this for a second. <laughs> get a little EHS training out of the way here. Oh, oh here she comes! Here she comes! Oh, we gotta get up in that thing. <laughs> oh, it just disappeared. So what this is, this is what happens when you, you know, you know a guy. So, I got that mini scale, mini scale Hudson a couple of weeks back and uh, had some busted parts because it was sold and by a an auction place and they didn't back it right and so they broke it so anyway I know this guy and uh, he actually had a pilot for that so he's gonna send me this pilot but doesn't that box seem too big to fit in a, a pilot I mean looky there there's my front pilot, so I can I can get to working on that Hudson. But I, I don't understand what what else could be in this box. What oh what what else? What else could be? Oh oh uh, oh uh, 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 uh. Well, hold on a second. Here, come back, Rob. Start up over here. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> man, man, it almost flipped the car 180 degrees. So there we have it. Save you a few seconds unwrapping all that stuff because this I know a guy guy is a, knows how to wrap stuff so it doesn't get broken. So he's helping me out by providing me this for my Hudson. And I asked him about a few other things, and he said, well, you know, I got a duplicate, my Loco K5. And, you know, about 37 seconds later, he's saying, well, I can send it to you for, you know, a few coins. And I pretty much said, well, I like that wrapper up. So thanks, Carrie. Outstanding, very much appreciated. An excellent I know a guy guy. 
to have as a friend that you can, you know, know a guy. All right. So, so there's the quick opening. Nothing done. So, all right, well, I'll stop that and move it somewhere else. Well, here you go in all its resplendent glory. 1935 Myloco K5 Pacific in mint condition. Once again, thank you, Carrie. Just to say, when you get something from Carrie and he says it runs, it runs. Ah, oh, that's fun. And you gotta get me some little posties and set up that third rail so I can get picked on. Right on. And here she is from the nose point of view. My Loco 1764 scale. K5, Pennsylvania Pacific. Of course, there were only two K5s built. And they were a tad bit bigger than the normal K4s. Same diameter drivers, bigger boiler. So here we have an aluminum, cast aluminum boiler shell. Some brass details, right? Generator, marker lights, all that kind of stuff. The running boards are additional pieces. Uh, little blow-offs there. Non-working uh, cab light, all right, front box, steps, normal Pincy uh, Pilot, let's see if she'll come off easily, looky there, looky there, let's see the all famous, this is kind of like the uh, late M1s, right, with the giant saddle that was cast as part of the uh, cylinders. Okay, got our 80 inch drivers now. These are the correct original ones, but they don't have the, the straight counterweights like normal Pincy practice. But look at all, look at all that detail. Now I guess I must admit I have changed that wire. Um, here, here's the original ones that were, <laughs> now mind you, it did actually run, but uh, Kind of herky jerky with a few shorts when, <laughs> with the insulation, the raw insulation area is uh, wiggled around. Um, so again, I mean, it, it needs a full restoration and I'll be working on that. Um, got the hand reverse unit in the back here. Okay. And this is here, I'll flip her over as daintily as I can because she's big and heavy. See that lovely My Loco uh, big cast underframe and the Pensy uh, trailing truck, lead truck, all of that beautiful detail. So I'm pretty sure the Pensy K4 frame, while maybe similar to the Hudson frame, is different because it has, if nothing else, a different. Uh, tail, you know, drawbar section of the cab, and it has those little outriggers for the uh, trailing truck springs for the uh, single axle Pensy trailing truck. Um, but other than that, she looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, most certainly something that I can restore and be very happy to uh, add to the collection. So, hey. I guess why I have that upside down. Maybe a quick look see Lou at the underside of the uh, uh, running boards there. So these are just brass. I'm, I suppose if I wanted to, I could try and make some, uh, make a new set that was a little cleaner and straighter. 
because these are a little banged up after 800 years. Uh, but, you know, she looks pretty good. And I guess I also need to decide what color I'm going to paint it, whether I'm just going to go with the uh, Pincy, uh, you know, flat black type or satin, whatever you want to call it, or if I want to give a shot to a little bit of the dark locomotive enamel, or was it dark freight locomotive enamel or whatever, where it's uh, some, uh, some dark, dark green with a BBN some black paint dipped in there to turn it practically black. Uh, but anyway, even as old as that is and as dirty as it is and as rusty as all the wheels were, popped her right on the track and bing bang, she ran right away. So, once again, old trains are the bomb. You can never have too many. And you can always have too few. And usually, Like a lot of old fine automobiles, no matter how dirty and messed up it is, you can turn it around and get her back in shape. So there's a starting point right there, starting point. All right, thanks for looking. If you like it, please uh, click a like and subscribe and we'll see what else we can do. I still uh, need to do a video of fixing up this, uh, this Hudson now that I have now that I have the, uh, ah, let me get her up there. So now that I have this piece, thanks to Carrie, I can, uh, I can work on a repair for that. So that's, that'll be fairly soon, hopefully. And I gotta fix that frame, so who knows? If I was smart, I'd probably do that real quick and uh, not take this apart, but I'm an idiot, so. I can't seem to do things that make sense that way. <laughs> so until next time, thanks. There you go. Look at that size. K5 tender in 17 64 compared to a quarter inch scale legacy line L tender that's uh, probably in pretty close to the right dimensions for quarter scale. That's pretty impressive. That my local tender's giant. Sweet. There you have it. Let's look at a couple of little details. So you can see it's a uh, two piece. Notice the seam. Two piece aluminum uh, shell with a an aluminum spine frame or back, you know, whatever you'll call it. You see where the Little screws these are that hold her in. Okay, you got some bronze steps on the corners, and then the bronze uh, self-equalizing trucks. No springs, just you know self-equalization. Practically mint. You can see the high polish on the on the wheels. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and of course the uh, outside third rail pickup. So. Carrie, Carrie gave me an awesome deal. Uh, I mean, you know, he said before he even showed me a picture, he said, this thing's going to need to be restored. But hey, you want one, there's how you can get one for a good deal. So, yeah, I'm good with that. Definitely good with that. All right. So there you go. And you compare that again to the Lionel Tender. Oops, oops, yeah, let me, let me destroy that thing. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? That's just awesome. And if you look up top, man, that gives you all you need to know right there. All right, here we go. We'll try and do this. <laughs> I rigged up some fake outside third. <clears throat> Using some old, uh, American Flyer rail. And here she runs. Oh boy. Get a little carried away there. <laughs> I 
Well, this wouldn't be any fun if you didn't do stuff like that, would it? <laughs> Right, get her back up there. Having too much fun, I'm getting a little out of control. <laughs> All right, enough, enough, enough. You get the picture. So, there you have it a quickie, a quickie on a 1935 ish 1764 scale <sighs> Miloco K5 Pennsylvania Pacific. Uh, aluminum, brass, no die cast, metal fatigue, no zinc rod. Hate it when that happens. Cast iron drivers. And as Kerry likes to say, and I agree with him, all the good stuff. Open frame motor, hand reverse, outside third rail. <laughs> Back to the Stone Age with a big door stop. So that's where it starts. And yes, it needs a full restore. And yep, it didn't go anywhere. So stay tuned. When I get my two rail loops uh, up and running, you know, I got locos like these. That's just gonna entice me to get that done more quickly, hopefully, if I quit traveling for work. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. See you next time.